Welcome to our Pembroke's Public Safety Night, everybody here at Pembroke High School Fields. We're so glad you could come out and join us this afternoon. Folks, about 5.30, we're going to have the um, Plymouth County Sheriff's Department. They're going to put on a canine demonstration right out here in front of me, kind of, sort of, between us and the helicopter. We hope you're enjoying your afternoon. We do have t-shirts for sale for only $10. Um, everything else is free today, and that's courtesy of the uh, Pembroke 300 Committee, Mr. Bill Walter and the committee. This is all about celebrating Pembroke's 300th anniversary, and that's why we're here today. So enjoy. We got bounce houses over here. We got Brianville Deli cooking up hamburgers and hot dogs, and it's all free. It's all here. Please make sure you visit all of our service men and women. All the different uh, police forces have come out. We also have Plymouth County Sheriff, and they have a, a child ID program going on um, right over at the big white truck here out in front of me. Please come on over and have your uh, child ID. And we appreciate you guys hanging out. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Passive, uh, passive drug dog. We've had him about five years. He finds it and he sits down and puts his nose where it is. There'll be more dogs here later.
He's used to smell stuff. <laughs> hey, Monica. <laughs> That's awfully heavy. Flash. Can I hold this? Yep, you can hold it. If your mom says you can hold it. Here, Will, look at me. Can I hold this, Mom? Mommy, can I hold this? Can I hold this? Can I hold this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait, wait. Look at me. This is a desert. That's a desert. These are grenades. Yep. These will break through a window and then we put gas inside the house. What's that? That's a less lethal gun. See these I things here? It. These won't hurt, these won't kill a person, but they'll hurt a person if you shoot them and distract them long enough that we can get a hands on them and, and take them into custody. It's called the less lethal shotgun. Look at this suck up. This is what, what is that? Look at this. Any of them. You got the uh, 240 on the bottom, the 249 up here, and the M4 with two or three. You see the helicopter today? All right, uh, let me see if I can figure it out. What? Oh. Well, no, he said he goes, Harley doesn't uh, hand him up. Yeah. You know I mean? If we snap him apart. Sorry. You have a good week out. up there, at least, though? Awesome. All right, good. Pick <laughs> that up, Bill. Okay, Yeah, just give him. No, you don't have to put him. Get in the back. <laughs> Not press. Get in the back. The big thing. Smile. No, it's on. No, it's Oh, yeah. Sunday, So, do you want to grab a hamburger and stuff? I got this. Yeah, no, I'll sit down. No, I'll go. Good show, man. Oh, yeah. This is pretty good. Yeah, this, yeah, this is a little uncomfortable. Yeah, it does not comfortable at all. It'll save you, though. What's this thing? What's this thing? You like the doors, huh? What do you think?
Hey folks, welcome to the uh, Pembroke community. My name is Ken Ballinger. I'm an assistant deputy superintendent with the Pope County Sheriff's Office and I'm in charge of the canine training and our canine program overall. Uh, currently, right now, through the Sheriff's Office in Plymouth, we have about 130 police dogs from all over Eastern Massachusetts that train with us in uh, a bunch of different disciplines what uh, typically police service dogs do today. Very good attention to that jogger over there on the track. Um, and uh, he's a mix between actually is turned into what Blitz might have to do during a tactical operation. Um, the main thing that our dogs do when they work for us is searching our dogs to control a person, which is with a muzzle, and that more and more often happens with our dogs, but it is not something that a guard dog or a junkyard dog or even a family pet is the responses that our dogs give are trained and they are learned behavior, and the dogs do them because they are conditioned. Um, probably the hardest thing for us to convince people is, is that dogs do not think, they do. And typically, as humans, we tend to humanize our dogs. Um, and dogs don't have the ability to do that. They don't reason, they don't rationalize, they just do what the environment either allows them to do or does not allow them to do. Um, the other difference between how, as humans, we learn versus how a dog might learn, as we learn through the old adage that our grandmother taught us, practice makes perfect, how a dog learns is called perfect practice. So if we showed you a canine demonstration maybe three to four years ago, if our dog made a mistake, which would be pretty typical because they get smart and know that we're generally not going to correct them in front of 500 of our closest friends, we would let the mistake go. And that mistake sort of bred inconsistency in the dogs. Um, what we do now is we uh, correct the behavior all the time and we reward the things that we want and we don't for the things that we don't. Um, as I said, Blitz's primary function right now is the tactical work. Uh, him and a couple of the dogs like him work uh, either with the Metro SWAT team or the Semlik SWAT team or the Nemlik SWAT team, or actually we have Mark Tebow here as well, from the Cape LEC, which is the Law Enforcement Council down in Cape Cod. And these dogs now, when they're deployed with a team, have about $50,000 worth of equipment on them. They have a ballistic vest on them that contains a camera and microphones and, and a way that we can uh, radio that I can talk to the dog when I can send so three times a month to give them the reward system. They do it every day because the dog has to eat every single day. At $3,500 to as much as maybe $5,500 just for a dog that played with the ball the right way. Um, we can I'm going to say hello to all the kids and folks over here, but he's coming out to look for a target order that he's been trained to indicate to. So the caller doesn't mean that Louie doesn't find drugs without it. It just means it's just another signal for him. It's pretty quick. I'm guessing it's in the middle. <laughs> so what John's going to do is call primary reward right now. He's going to reward the dog as directly to the source of the smell as possible. Um, and that trains the dog and conditions the dog that every time he shows us not only that it's in the green bag, but precisely where in the green bag that it is, that he gets a little bit more food. How old is Louie now, John? Five. So Louie's about five. As I said, we got him from the Rockland, uh, the Rockland Animal Control, um, and he was probably slated to go to the big farm. Um, if uh, we didn't take him, he had some issues with, um, with uh, just kind of being, an, I guess, an unruly dog. Uh, for our purpose, we need dogs that will come out here in front of uh, three to five hundred of our closest friends and not be affected by them. That's what we call drive or um, a desire to do something. Um, they are the typical dogs that we're looking for. We rescue about five to ten dogs per year from local animal shelters. You might have seen the dog that's going to Sandwich PD 
that was in the Herald about a week or two ago. Um, dogs like that are typically dogs that people have no use for, and for our purpose, they're, they're wonderful and perfect. I didn't say it before, but all of our dogs live at home with us. It is the most crucial part of our dog's life. Um, training that we do for them is what makes them do what they do, but the bond and the feeling that they have for us and their family is what makes them do it in pretty extreme environments like this. You're going to start searching from the other side so this actually lasts for a second. with every piece of technology that you can think of had been out searching the area for the, the ballistic evidence from where the shooting happened. Uh, a dog, a firearms dog, Pat's dog, a Brockton dog, and a Weymouth dog went out and located the forensic You guys want to see it again, right? <laughs> All right, they want to see it again, buddy. So if you're listening closely, Mark is challenging this person. Hey, stop what you're doing, or the dog's going to be sent after you to hit you. Um, I can tell you... Um, all of us would rather wear the big bike suit and have dog bearing down on you with all that terrific pressure that they can do. Can somebody run up and do a pat search on him and then we'll do an escort back to the car? Um, we would rather have that happen uh, with the bike suit on and it hurts than this muscle. These dogs are really fast with doing this in a safe, short distance. Mark, will you leave me a sleeve too out of your trunk? Um, and uh, this is something that. Uh, this is worse than the bite suit, trust me. So what we want you guys to see is how neutral not only is the dog to the other officers working around. Again, this is about practice being perfect. The dog has to see, hear the commands, and see the escorts, and see the person placed in handcuffs and searched and put in the back of the car. That's what makes the police dog uh, much more reliable, and it also makes him um, recognize all the signals. <laughs> which is what you just saw at the end, it is not so that Oliver thinks he ripped my arm off. <laughs> Oliver is a very nice, sane dog that lives with a bunch of kids at home. That's what we call a carry, it's a reward for the dog. I, in, in uh, a sense, become the prey for the dog, the big bunny rabbit that he would chase if he was out in the wild, and that's his reward for doing that. Um, he is very smart, but we made a funny on you. Um, he, didn't, uh, he didn't open the door on his own, um, Mike and our cars are all open back out again. How about we walk them off and we'll drive the car over there. We'll give Oliver a big hand. Awesome. So, uh, now, we go. now it's locked. So the remote door system that's in there um, allows us, should we need our dog to come to our aid, that's our partner, that's a dog that we, and our partner that we drive with all the time. <laughs> Can we get a rodeo clown? <laughs> so you know, we talked about real early on about the dog uh, taking a hold of the person and holding on. Not that Mark is um, a heavy guy, but he's a big guy and he's got about 50 pounds worth of protective gear on. And you can see that he actually landed on top of his arm when that happened. And Zara did his job and he right off the um, That's very typical what happens and now they want to see it again. Oh, Ryan, how old is Zara now? Eight years old? 
Yeah, so his eyes was pretty chicken. Um, some of the fun facts that we like to say as canine guys, these dogs, when they have about maybe 30 yards of open running room, can't move at about 35 to 40 miles an hour. That guy is over, he's totally focused on that, he doesn't care about the venture sitting there or a black monocular. He's totally as focused on that bad guy, and he's very, very good. And again, we make all of our training as realistic as possible for the dogs. He doesn't know that this is a demonstration for the National Line Out of Pembroke. He just knows that this is something that every time we do an exercise like this, that it looks like real police work to him. And uh, that's what makes the dogs 